One of the most intriguing uses of stem cells can be found in the field of regeneration. Whether the goal is to regenerate damaged heart or nerve cells, or to regenerate an entire limb, a similar process must occur. A damaged tissue must rewind development, calling on cells that can reverse their differentiation, or rallying reservoirs of stem cells that can generate both differentiated cells and more stem cells. Humans can regenerate certain parts of the body. Wound healing is a poor cousin of regeneration. But the human liver, for example, can regenerate an entire piece if it has been lost through damage or surgery. Other vertebrates are more proficient than mammals at regeneration. Some lizards and salamanders regenerate lost tails, and salamanders can regenerate entire limbs. However, the organism with one of the most incredible abilities to regenerate is the planarian. This worm's regenerative capabilities have been known for hundreds of years. And today, modern molecular biology techniques are turning this old favorite into a powerful new model for understanding the potential of stem cells. Planarians are free-living flatworms and are related to parasitic flatworms like the liver fluke and the tapeworm. They are found throughout the world in wet environments. They range in size from 3 to 12 millimeters and are scavengers, feeding on the decaying remains of animals and plants. Dr. Alejandro Sanchez Alvarado an HHMI investigator at the University of Utah describes some of the planarians' physiology. And planarians derive their name from the fact that they're fairly flat. Uh, planum means flat, and hence planarians. And, um, and the reason why they're interesting is because uh, these are perhaps the, the simplest uh, organisms that display a centralized uh, nervous system. So the central nervous system is composed of two lobes uh, that look like a horseshoe shape. Uh, around this area right here, and those two are connected to ventral cords that send projections all the way down to the very tip of the animal, and this is how the, the brain basically controls the motion and, and musculature of, this, of these animals. This dark gray area right here uh, is uh, part of the gastrovascular system. This little thing right here is a muscular pharynx, which, which actually comes out from uh, the ventral surface from the belly of the animal out and is used to impale, literally impale food and suck it back in. Now planarians are funny because um, they don't have a mouth so they only have a single uh, opening to their body and it's through this pharynx. So the food enters through the pharynx, it is digested and whatever is not digested and is not dumped into the rest of the animal comes back out through the same pharynx. So it's, uh, it's, it's an organ that serves uh, two functions. These two cartoon-looking cockeye uh, eyes right here um, actually are the photoreceptors of these, uh, of these planarians, who are also known as eye spots. And what these eye spots can do is detect light. And planarians uh, don't like light. They're phototactically negative. So whenever they see light, they'll just run away from the light and they'll hide somewhere. And uh, this is perhaps you know, the prototypic uh, Darwinian eye, which consists of a light sensing organ and a, a pigment cup organ that allows for the uh, light to be um, um, handled by the organism. But what makes a planarian so exceptional at regeneration is its ability to rapidly grow even very small body pieces into completely formed worms. Unlike the cells of most animals, most of the cells in a planarian's body can act like stem cells. If you cut a planarian in half between its head and tail, the tail half grows a head, and the head half grows a tail. If you cut it lengthwise, the two halves grow new second halves. You can even bisect just the head between the two eye-like photoreceptors, and you will end up with a worm with two heads. This process can be taken to incredible extremes. Dr. Sanchez Alvarado describes the planarian's ability to regenerate. So you can take a planarian and slice it into eight fragments, okay? And each fragment will go on and regenerate a complete animal. That would be like saying that, you know, you can cut your, your ear off and then a new you will arise from that ear. Well, planarians can do that. We can't, but planarians can do that. Um, 
Morgan in 1898 demonstrated that you can take a fragment that's 1 279th the size of the original animal, and that tiny little fragment uh, from the flank of the animal will be capable of restoring all of the missing parts and produce a complete and properly shaped organism. And it does this in about a week or so. And so uh, that just gives you an idea of how plastic these animals are. Thomas Hunt Morgan investigated the planarian's regenerative powers at the turn of the 20th century. Even before Morgan, Charles Darwin wrote about planarians he found during his voyage on the Beagle, describing their abilities and illustrating their anatomy. What new information has modern-day biology been able to uncover about planarian stem cells and regeneration? And what do these findings tell us about the human capacity for regeneration? At the University of Utah, the Sanchez Alvarado Lab is using today's molecular biology tools to uncover the secrets behind the planarian's remarkable abilities. They use a particular type of planarian, Schmittia mediterranea, in their research. Otto Gudelhofer, a graduate student in the Sanchez Alvarado Lab, explains the advantages of using planarians to study stem cells. Uh, but I, I didn't feel like the mammalian system is ready to tell us a lot. I felt like a lot of the basic knowledge that we need to know in order to ask the right questions about stem cells needed to be discovered in a much simpler organism. So although um, the mouse work is very, very interesting, um, I thought studying it in a much simpler organism would be much more interesting. And that's how I got turned on to studying stem cell biology in uh, planaria. Experiments using RNA interference or RNAi, were designed to identify the genes involved in the planarian's neoblasts, the stem cell-like cells that migrate to areas of damage and allow the worm to regrow the missing parts of its body. The RNAi experiments identified 240 genes involved in a planarian's regeneration, including one coding for a protein called SMEDWI, that is similar to proteins found in fruit fly stem cells and during the process of human sperm maturation. This molecule, SMEDWI, uh, receives its name uh, because it's a homolog of a molecule that was discovered in Drosophila called PEWI. And PEWI is a molecule that uh, was identified in Drosophila as being responsible for the maintenance of the stem cells in the gonads of, uh, of uh, the female fly. We were expecting Pee-wee to actually play a role in, the, in regulating the maintenance of the stem cells that are found in the body plan of planarians. And so the original phenotype, the defect that we uncovered by eliminating this gene using double stranded RNA, said that that was the case. Because the animals look a lot like what uh, irradiated animals look like. And irradiated animals basically have no stem cells because the stem cells are the only cells that divide in planarians. So you subject them uh, to large doses of irradiation, like you would do for cancer, for example, all the dividing cells are eliminated. And there's no stem cells to produce new daughter cells to go in and replace these dying cells, and the animal dies. And it dies in a very specific way. Uh, the head begins to resorb back, and the body begins to assume a, a ventral curling. So the animal now looks almost like a taco shell. When we silence Pee-wee with RNAi, we got exactly the same phenotype, a regression of the head and this curling phenotype. So we thought, aha, when we look at these animals in detail, all those stem cells are going to be gone because we're essentially getting the same defect. But we were surprised because when we went and looked at these animals, we realized that the stem cells were there. They were happy. The stem cells were actually responding to tissue turnover, so they were producing division progeny. And so the message there was to us that Pee-wee not only had a function in the maintenance of stem cells, but it also had a function in regulating the function of daughter cells. So you're, you're, you're causing a defect early on in the life history, even before that, that cell is born, that when the cell na is now born, it's supposed to go on and differentiate, it cannot. And then it, it, it fails and it undergoes apoptosis most likely, and then it dies. So the lesson is actually uh, quite profound for us because it tells us that this molecule Pee-wee is actually doing something to the genome of the stem cell 
that will determine whether or not the daughter cell will be functional. But how much of this knowledge will be relevant to human stem cells? I think the main thing that um, could be applied to uh, human invertebrate biology based on what we're learning in the planaria right now is identification of genes. So by identifying these genes that are involved in planaria regeneration, hopefully we can understand their function in humans. If these are genes that are promoting regeneration in planaria, um, it, it may be possible somewhere far down the line to turn these genes on pharmacologically and they may have some effect in vertebrates. Multicellularity has been around for about 600 million years. So the history of life on this planet is unicellular. It's just all single cells. So it took, you know, three and a half billion years, only 600 million years ago, multicellularity emerged. And one of the fundamental attributes, I think, of multicellularity is the maintenance or segregation of the germline into stem cells to repair tissue, which we damage all the time. Even Drosophila uh, has uh, now stem cells in its gut which is absolutely required to keep nutrition to the stem cells in the gonads such that the animal can reproduce. So I think all of these processes uh, at some level are going to be conserved and by studying planarians we might be able to inform that biology and by, by extension understand our own biology uh, a little bit better than we do today.